Hey, it's some old guy coding here again today, and uh, we've got a project in front of us here. Uh, turns out that a gentleman named Michael Gardy uploaded a Digicomp 2 model on Thingiverse. So, what a job. Man, look at all these parts. So we got eight of these uh, deck parts. Um, well, let's take a look at it online first, where he gives some very complete instructions for assembly of this thing and uh, did a fantastic job of modeling all these parts. This, uh, this uh, Digicomp 2 was uh, created by ESR back in the 60s, uh, Education Science Research. It's, uh, it's a toy for kids that you'd assemble and then you'd uh, be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers with this with marbles that would roll down the front. And These things are as scarce as uh, hen's teeth nowadays. I don't even see them come up on eBay. But uh, thankfully, uh, Mike went ahead and modeled it up for us again so that we can 3D print one out. So it's super cool. Um, let's take a quick peek at these. The, there, there are um, eight of these panels. Unless you have a super big uh, uh, 3D printer, you could print the entire panel in, in one go. Um, but uh, it, he divided them up into eight pieces here. He also supplies the, the full-size panel in case you want to slice them up differently for a smaller printer or, or do something a little different if you've got a, a unique sized uh, print bed. So there's the, the name on there. Digicom. Ooh! Cool stuff. So there's a couple of ways you can... I'm getting ahead of myself here. But um, these parts stick onto a, a support board like this. Let me get use this one out of the way first. And they all stick onto the support board um, in, in the appropriate places. And I have no idea if that's right or not. Uh, the system goes up here. And then uh, one way you can do this is uh, stick them all down temporarily. Uh, uh, mark marks on the board to uh, where the holes are supposed to be. And then go ahead and drill those out. Uh, Mike has instructions for that too. Uh, but he's also got a CNC file up there, a DXF file that you can download and cut with your uh, CNC machine. Uh, mostly printed CNC, a little writer, whatever you have that'll that'll fit this size of of uh, board on there. Um, he recommends quarter inch plywood. I used a quarter inch uh, uh, piece of hardboard that has a coating on the front for, for white marker boards, you know, so it's nice and white. He recommends in the instructions that you paint the board white because, you know, obviously this is a pretty thin, uh, thin piece of material here and some of the coloring from the wood would show through, so he recommends painting it white. And I just happen to have this stuff laying around, so I figured I might as well use it. So uh, there's two options. You can either um, according to uh, Mike's instructions, uh, place the uh, front plates on here and then uh, outline the holes and then drill them with a 5 8 inch drills. Uh, the second option is if you're going to CNC it. Well, there's a couple of points in here I want to make uh, if you're going to be CNCing this part. <laughs> Something I forgot to do uh, when I made mine. But let's take a look at that. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, we're going to start creating a hole. And I'm using a 3 uh, uh, 1 8 inch uh, end mill. So it's 3.18 millimeters. And if we take a look, and if I make a part with this guy, and we zoom in, you can see that it's not quite fully filling out that... Uh, that full uh, full hole there. So I'm going to do that and we'll go ahead and make these two but on these two we're going to go ahead and do that overcut. Uh, so let me grab this one and that one and then on ESTL cam here uh, we can do it manually but it just does it automatically too so it's create uh, um, corner overcuts. That's what we want. So it marks them for us here so we can see where they're going to be and we just say OK and it adds them in there. So you can see the difference between this one here where we're leaving a little material there which is what I forgot and did on my cut to the board which probably makes it a little tough for me to get those bearings in there and opposed to um, what if uh, you did overcuts and that cuts out the entire part plus a little extra. So I just wanted to demonstrate kind of what kind of a difference that makes here. Um, these two holes were cut without the overcuts and if we try to put that guy in, we can get him in, especially if we tap him down a little bit with um, a block. We 
I can get that guy to go in there. But uh, in some cases, it's really, really tight. And I don't even have that in there yet. We'd have to uh, tap it down some more. Whereas uh, if you go to the ones that uh, have the overcut, like this guy right here, and you point that guy in, and then we'll just... Should just slide in for you. Might be a little bit difficult, but not nearly so as as without. So yeah. So so we're going to start assembly here. Um, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, not a project for those faint at heart because there's like ten thousand parts in here. Um, you know, I do have some X-rays in there and a couple of uh, uh, sets of failed prints that I haven't uh, filtered out yet, but. There are a lot of parts involved with this guy. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start uh, with the assembly here. And I will bring up uh, his instructions on the website here too on the iPad so we can take a look at that. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, get these um, braces around the outside of the board underneath. There's also some uh, quarter inch thick plywood that I've cut here. Um, for uh, the outside decorative uh, uh, banding, which we will paint blue. And uh, so there we go. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what I do is I just search for uh, Digi Dash Comp up in the the search window here for Thingiverse. And uh, looks like we need to do a little bit of organization because it does show up under here as does his Dr. Nim. But he also has uh, remodeled the, uh, the one with the marbles that would flip the colors and I can't think of the name of that. And I've also done the DC1, uh, Digicomp1, that I'd like to have linked under that uh, you know, keyword too. So we'll, we'll get those cleaned up. But anyway, let's dig into this. He includes the uh, original manuals to download for uh, the Digicomp 2 and the assembly instructions, but he does have a few tweaks to the assembly instructions here. <clears throat> and he's got a parts list for all the parts to be printed here and some additional materials like uh, I believe it's 1.2 millimeter music wire for the clips that hold the flip-flops in and that sort of thing and some doweling and uh, the additional wood here too that uh, you can certainly view, view online. So the first step here is to build the base and we're, I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, it's, this is a 13.85 by 28 inch piece of plywood and I'm going to go ahead and put those side panels on, uh, the, the base panels on first. These, uh, these are uh, sold as 1x2s in uh, the hardware store but they're actually 3 quarters of an inch wide by 1 and a half inch tall and uh, those are going to be around the bottom edges here and we'll take a look at that in a second but let's go ahead and start with that All right so I'm gonna glue these to the back of the main board <clears throat> I've also got some short uh, brad nails there I'm gonna try to uh, stick it in with a couple of brad nails too just so uh, just so that we can uh, continue assembly without having to clamp up and wait for everything to dry a little on here And there we go. Pop that glove off, and we're going to load up uh, <clears throat> some of these short uh, brads into the uh, brad nailer here. And hopefully, this will uh, be able to get the head recessed into the board here so that we can put those other pieces on. We'll give it a try right off the top here, and uh, if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll take a different route. <clears throat> here a little bit. So, I'm going to be tacking in this uh, sideboard here between the, the two long boards. We'll do that one next. That's plenty more than I needed. Let's see if we can get the glove off so I can reuse it. There we go. All right. So we'll get this guy over here.
that's going into the wood pretty good now. We'll get the other end here so it's nice and uh, straight. And then I also want to attach the sideboards through here. So I should have added some glue in there. I forgot about it. Too late now. But I'm going to go back to a little bit longer brad here. And we will go ahead and connect those. little bit of black dust on top of here this is from the black material that the, the board is made out of a little bit of sawdust on there but that's not going to be a problem the next task is to start fitting these guys on here now if you haven't uh, pre cnc would your board you're going to want to fit these on here temporarily to make sure they all fit properly and then take them all off and drill but being where we've already done this, I just want to put them on temporarily enough to make sure that they fit properly. And it's kind of a puzzle. Does it go like this? I bet you it goes like this. Yes. Down here. All right, I got myself a roll of frog tape here. It's kind of out of season for frogs right now, so I think I'll just use it to hold this thing together. Nice and careful. Get them all. Well, I certainly failed there, didn't I? Try to get them all nice and lined up. Make sure they fit okay before we tack them down. Yeah, that one doesn't seem too bad. Although, I'm thinking... Maybe I could just sand a little bit, you know, a little bit off that edge. Better. And I think we could uh, take a little off the, probably off the top here too. I think it's just the first layer. It was a little too pressed down into the build place and probably spread out a little bit lighter than it should have. I'm going to get it as good as I can get it now. You don't need to have a CNC machine to make one of these things. And we'll take a look at the uh, uh, techniques and approach if you're not cutting uh, your backboard here with a, with a CNC machine. So let's take this for an example. I just have this extra piece. Um, let's say you've got all your pieces, your top plates laid out uh, side by side and they're all lining up very nicely and they look good and they're in the final spots. But they're just taped down for the moment. Um, the next thing you want to do is outline all the holes onto the piece of wood. You may want to use a pencil. Uh, all I've got on hand here is a pen. But we just go through and any place where we're going to have to drill a hole, for instance, even this guy over here, we can mark a hole to be drilled there. And these guys here just outline, outline the shape of the hole. All these little half moon shapes here are where uh, the bearings are going to go. It's a plastic piece. Uh, I've got some in my pocket here. Um, and we'll be making spots for these to fit into. Those guys there. And it looks like I've got that one there. And I think that's it. And remember to mark these little uh, uh, holes here where, um, where screws are going to have to go to so that you can drill those out. So at that point, once we have them marked, we're going to uh, take our top plates off and we're going to be left over left with uh, this sort of deal here where we have these holes that need to be cut out the 
you might think that, boy, you have to be awfully accurate doing that. But I was talking to um, talking to Mike, and uh, he actually says that uh, what he did is he used a, um, a small uh, drill to, to start the hole, and then he used a spade bit to cut out the rest of it. And uh, the size he recommends is 5 8 inch. Uh, the, only, the only bit I have handy here that's a 5 8 inch is a, a Forstner bit. And you can certainly use that if you have one on hand. Otherwise, you can drill it out. But let's face it, even if you go a little bit big on these holes, which we will be, it's going to be covered, you know, by the plate here anyway. So let me get that lined up in the right spot. It's going to be covered here, so you're not going to see the over, oversized hole down there. And of course, uh, make sure that you have a board behind uh, uh, the part you're going to, uh, the board, uh, uh, you know, a backer board behind the board you're going to be drilling so uh, you don't drill holes into your mom's dining room table or something. And I'm just going to start a couple of these on camera. <clears throat> this is just one technique to do it. You can certainly use a, a regular drill bit too. You want to make sure that you at least take out the amount of material uh, for the for the hole here. And I'm not doing a very good example here, but um, I just kind of wanted to show. Let me get a line over there uh, that we're just making sure that we're taking out the entire um, at least at least the hole, at least the mark area we marked. So I'm getting there. I just wanted to make a, make the point when you have a situation like uh, this, we have to drill out both spots. So there's going to be two holes there. Right. So I've got uh, all the holes drilled out. I drilled out this little hole here, also where the uh, screw will be going through to the uh, back side of the board. And uh, I think we've we've got it good here. I think we're doing good. So the next thing we want to do is uh, start placing these uh, bearings, these little uh, bearing guys. And uh, I see that uh, printing mine, I've got a little bit of uh, support along the edges there that I didn't need, so we'll take that off. Make sure they look nice and clean. And as you can see in here, even if we put it in this hole, it's going to be pretty loose. It'll just kind of fall right through. And that's fine. Don't panic on that. So even though the holes below uh, will be a little bit too large for these guys, they'll actually be supported by the uh, front panel here. And uh, we'll show you how that works. So a little file would be perfect for cleaning up these holes. Any, if you have any flash over from, uh, you know, uh, or, or little danglies that didn't quite uh, uh, print correctly. And uh, I apparently had uh, supports turned on when I was printing this, so I'm just going to break those supports off here. A little bit of support on the edge it decided it needed. Now these guys should have a little bit of a lip on this very, very top here. And it's probably really tough to see on the camera, but there's a little lip on top. And depending on how uh, you, you printed, if you print firmly on that first layer, you might have a little lip on the bottom too. That lip on the bottom uh, really works against us. So if you want to just file or sand that guy off, or just you know use a sharp object here and just kind of work that bottom little schmutz off on the outside diameter. And then what should happen here is we should be able to. Let's see if I can get zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing if I don't get my hands in the way. Use this guy right here. We're going to uh, put the little pokey parts up toward the top and push that in there. And then we're going to see if we can just get it to work through the hole gently. And there it popped through for me. And what you should hear is you should hear this. Uh, I'm going to lift that up so I can do it here. You know, you can hear the layers rubbing against each other. And that's what you're looking for and then just set it down so that it's flush uh, with the top in that top little uh, lip that comes out on the top edge there. So there we are, we're done with that one. So we just proceed to go around through all the rest of those and insert those in. Um, we shouldn't have to force them uh, too much, but they could, should uh, kind of catch on the layers, uh, according to Mike here. Uh, it should kind of catch on the print layers and hold in there snugly.
And once again, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, little pointy bits in first. And we'll try to work that guy in gently without uh, breaking the uh, the panel. Support it a little bit from underneath here with my finger as we push it through. There we go. Now it popped through for me. Let's take a close look at that here. If we can. Uh, you're not going to focus for me, are you? There you go. So here we have it up a little bit. We're just going to push it right through the layers and it's going to go tickety tickety across the uh, print layers until we have it down flush on top just like that <clears throat> now if you uh, CNC your part you're going to have some pressure from the board behind there too or you do have the option of just cutting the hole a little larger that seems to hold in there very snugly so I'm very impressed with that the, the fit is very nice. I mean, you can pull it out if you want to, but uh, if uh, if you feel that that's not solid enough, you could always glue it after the fact, um, just to give it a little more support. But uh, Mike says that uh, on his these uh, they hold in there just fine. So I've got some repositional uh, permanent, dry permanent adhesive here. So let's go ahead and start taking these, come these guys back off again. And I've got a board down here underneath the, on top of the workbench so I don't get, uh, you know, glue stuck all over the place there. When I spray it, it looks like I'll get some up here, but that's okay. Let's maybe do a little bit at a time here, huh? To, oh, it wants to hold it down really good. Make sure I got that all lined up properly. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go on to the next one. And I need a little bit of scrap here to cover up the top of the uh, other part. This will work. <clears throat> so I'll spray on top of there. Yeah, I think that would be okay. Just put a little weight on there to hold it down for a while. These are probably weight overkill in what we need. And I've got a whole bunch of these boards painted uh, navy blue. So we're going to go ahead and start attaching those. We'll start on the side here. I'm going to, uh, once again, brad nail them. I've got the short brads in the uh, brad nailer. And we'll also glue things down. I'm going to put it flush with the bottom. According to uh, uh, images online, it looks like uh, Mike uh, let it overhang on the bottom just a little bit, but I'm going to put it all the way up. So that's, of course, in a good spot where we can brad nail this end. And then one in the couple in the middle here to hold it down. All right, so that one's on. Let's go ahead and do the other side. I'm going to start trying to pop these little bearing pieces into the holes. I've got a two by four underneath here that uh, goes flush up against the back of the board where I'm going to start working here. The original manual recommends, um, you know, some books or something underneath so you don't collapse the center here. 
And uh, I'm going to try to start working these guys in. I don't know. They're pretty snug. They're pretty snug. Well, you know what? I don't remember this thing being very easy to assemble when I was a kid. <laughs> so I guess it shouldn't be any easier to assemble now, right? <laughs> there we go. There it's in. Ha ha! That's not going to be falling out like they were out of the uh, original set. No way. So I think we'll end it here for part one while I continue to get the rest of the bearings in place here. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and mark that little bell so you get notification. And if you want to support this channel, which I really appreciate also, you can do that through uh, my Patreon campaign. There's a link below uh, for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, every little bit helps. I really appreciate all the new and old patrons. Hi patrons, everybody. Any questions, uh, certainly do comment below ask away I'll do my best to answer and uh, be sure to check out Mike's other uh, replica builds of the uh, uh, ESR family out on Thingiverse and his other wonderful projects that he's building out there it looks like he's working on a, another replica a computer replica right now so very cool thanks Mike for sharing this with us and uh, we'll see you next time we'll continue